Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Uh, this week is the big old rum cast release I promised you at the end of last week's Daft Mill video. And as you can see by the title, it is the Ardna Merkin rum cask release. Now, I've been very excited for this since they began to tease it. And I requested a bottle, um, I mean, when I knew the company I worked for got the stock in. And it turned up at the shop, bought it straight away. I've slowly been having some of this and I've also given some samples to colleagues and things just to see what they thought of it because nearly cask strength young slightly peated rum matured whiskey is, is pretty interesting in the grand scheme of things. This is 55% ABV, natural colour, non-chill filters, stunning little golden colour. Um, it's finished in rum barrels from the Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean argue amongst yourselves and like with the sherry cast video we did uh, there's a little qr code on the back so let's go grab my phone i already know some of the details for this but for the sake of this video it's quite useful to show that these qr codes do work so if you scan it it will take you straight to the distillery website and i somehow managed to get a bottle 98 so the whiskey shop got some pretty low numbers uh bottle 98 of eighth Excuse me, 8,334. 50% of it was bottled by Kelly Combe and 50% of it was bottled by Jess Hamilton. It was bottled on the 19th of September 2023. I'm not going to look at the tasting notes. Maturation. So when you scroll down on the website, you'll get these like little coloured tabs. If you click on any of them, you can a, we can get the spirit hydrometer reading for this batch. So, um, our spirit is distilled using traditional copper stills. The wash still holds 10,000 litres, and the spirit still, which has a neck with a boil ball for extra reflux, holds 6,000 litres. We use standard shell and tube condensers, usually located outside the building, to turn the spirit vapor into liquid. Our new make spirit is cut 75% ABV. We use water from the Glenmore Spirit to dilute, sorry, from the Glenmore Spring to dilute the spirit down to 63.5% before filling the barrels. And these are the uh, spirit hydrometer reading, readings. Hopefully they will kind of come in for you there. And hopefully it's uh, shown in the correct way as well. It's not reversed on that. In the event it is, the minimum hydrometer reading was 73.5 and the max hydrometer reading was 84.5. And then if you click the tab below it, you'll go to maturation, click on see cask data. It turns up as a PDF file. I will try and zoom in as best as I can. And hopefully this kind of picks this up for you all. I'll try and keep it on there as long as we can. We can see the oldest distillate is from 2016. Um, and it's pretty much a blend, obviously it's a vatting of almost 50% unpeated to peated barley, bourbon into Jamaican rum, all American standard barrels, 2016 vintages and 2017 vintages. So the oldest this whiskey could be is maximum seven years old. Don't know whether that's going to be so long to work out, but let's close all that down. So 55% ABV, the spirit is cut at 63.5. Or goes in, no, it's cut at 75, then goes into barrel at 63.5. So we are only 8.5% off being cask strength at this point. Again, much like the sherry barrel, which I've decanted into a decanter, um, just to see if it gets a bit funky. I love this colour scheme. Like the, the sherry cask with the, the dark liquid with the dark blue label and the gold looked incredible. This kind of turquoisey sea blue label with the gold. Honestly, it just looks stunning. Art de Merck and I have to like just applaud you for the simplicity of this design, but how good it looks. Anyway, end up with facts and figures, whiskey time. So let's nose, let's taste, and let's see why this thing was a very pleasant surprise. Oh, the nose is all just toffee and milk chocolate. There is an element of almost like candied slash pickled ginger, banana, banana bread. There's a slightly metallic 
element to it as well. It's not sulfur as such, um, because we, I always associate sulfur with a kind of copper metal thing, but there's really sort of just bright top note to it, but it's not citrus, it is coming across as like a, almost like alloy, like. My mum, when I was growing up, used to, well, she still does love um, like Jamaican ginger cake. I think McVitie's make it in the UK. And I remember she used to cut a slice of it, toast it, and put a really thin layer of butter on it. And this is just transporting me back to those smells from that kitchen. Toasted ginger, toasted bread, like indulgent butter. There is a really, there is a grassy like quality to it, I will say. And literally just then there was this really intense note of milk chocolate again, but almost like heavily roasted coffee. Almost like a, imagine the best mocha you've ever had. You could leave your nose in there for days. And I feel that as this bottle begins to go down, the more unusual and maybe funkier it will become. But we will see. I'm tempted to, we've, probably, we've still got a couple of bottles of this left on the shelf and I'm still tempted to just pick a few more up. Milk chocolate. I never would have thought you'd get such a milk chocolate nose from a 50% peated and 50% unpeated spirit matured in American oak casks and Jamaican rum at 55% ABV. If you gave that to me blind, never, never ever would I say that's a 55% alcohol whiskey. It does have a little bit of grit to it and a little bit of body in terms of its like intensity at the end. That reads like a 48%, 46% whiskey. Never would you think it's 55. I don't know if a combination of bourbon and casks and rum casks kind of sanded down the intensity of the alcohol. The the no the sorry the nose the taste is just so light and grassy and delicate and you think it was a lowland whiskey at forty something percent in all honesty. So let's talk you through this. Bright sugar, like white sugar. There's the pith, like lemon zest. I think we've had that for the last two whiskies in a row, like a really bright lemon zesty note. There is a very yeasty kind of brioche thing to it, which again is, is always been like a kind of a default thing for me when it comes to Jamaican rum, Hampton rum in particular. Doesn't state where the rum came from, which is fine. I'm sure if you press someone hard and working hard enough, they'll probably tell you. And then it just resolves on this chewy, rich, sugary. The smoke thing is incredible because I don't, we don't know what level they peep to. Some of you may. Um, I call myself an Arden American fanboy, but I don't know everything about them. The smoke just comes through at the end. As you get over these sweet notes, you find this just kind of playing in and around your tongue and on the top of your palate. It's such good whiskey. Like, honestly, I have a real thing. Again, there's, there's two types of barrel maturation that will either make your whiskey incredible or make it really just not work. And for me, it's port and rum. And if you think about all the generic rum casks, releases and I mean that in the sense of mass market availability. Balvenie 14 is just inherently sweet. I don't think it does anything more than just be sweet. 
Same with Glenfiddich 21. They're owned by the same company. It's the same rum casks, really. Um, Glenfiddich 21 could be one of the best whiskies in the world, but because it's 40%, they choose to not make it one of the best whiskies in the world. Uh, who else does a rum barrel? There's like a, a in the UK anyway, there's like a Glenlivet Caribbean cask reserve. That's like a supermarket bottle for about 30 something pounds. Apparently it's quite good, but again, just generically sweet. The only ones that really come to mind, with this being an exception, would be the Glen Scotch 16 year old rum cask reserve, which was Guyana rum casks. And even with that bottle, it took to get about halfway through it before the rum really made itself present and it become this like brown, sugary, coffeed style of Glen Scotia. This is already singing some pretty big notes straight away. So, you know, they must've had some barrels that were just really doing well. And some perhaps that weren't as intense with the rum notes, but it's just delicious. And it really does set itself apart from most, if not all of the rum cask whiskey, regular bottles of whiskey, not single barrels or anything like that, that I've ever tried. It is delicious, it is elegant, it is complex, it is very, very interesting, and it's currently still available to buy. I paid £70 for this bottle, and I'm tempted to pick up at least two more, um, just to have in the bunker for like future drinking, because it'd be interesting to go back to whiskies like this when Arden and Merck can get to that 10, 12, 15 year old point of view, as what many people have done with Daft Mill and um, eventually Lindor's Abbey and places like that. Wolfburn as well. But... Um, Fun story for you. Uh, when I was in Glasgow in early November, um, I had some really good news um, related to some family stuff. Um, I was at a, a meeting for the whiskey shop and I, I got this good news during the meeting and I instantly said to myself, right, we're, go we're all going to the pot still after this and I'm gonna buy something very celebratory and bought a glass of Lagavulin 26 year old from the pot still in Glasgow. And it was a lot more money than what I thought it was gonna be. And it was okay. It was perfectly okay. But amongst all of the managers at the whiskey shop, um, our, our Nottingham manager, Richard, bought me a glass of this. And then I bought him a glass of the sherry release. And on the day, we both said, they're both excellent, but the sherry cask is a bit better. And I remember saying that before falling into a drunken haze in celebratory ways. Now I don't know if I agree with myself because I like the sherry and I've still got about half a bottle left in a decanter. Um, but I feel like I will plow through that because it's, it's, it's winter time, it's Christmas, it's a sherry cask, peated, gently peated whiskey, so it's gonna do things that I want flavor wise. Whereas this, I was expecting it to be uber sweet and really dense and it is chewy and oily, but the palate is so light and the nose is so white sugar, milk chocolate. Um, it just went against the grain of everything that I thought it was gonna be. And I think I gave the Arden Merck and Sherry Cask an eight and a half, I think. I really should watch these videos back before I do this. But this is also going to get an eight and a half. I think they're as good as each other. Uh, I've loved every Arden Merck and I've ever tried They've all just been excellent. And yeah, so I've just got to say thank you to Arden American. I think this video will be coming out. Uh, uh, this video should be coming out the week of Christmas Eve on Sunday. Uh, so we will have a video on Christmas Day, but I will wish you all a Merry Christmas or indeed whatever holiday it is you celebrate this time of year. Or if you don't celebrate Christmas, just have a good Monday on Christmas Day. Um, but yes, this is also an eight and a half out of 10. If you can find one, please get one because you will be surprised, intrigued, and genuinely blown away by how good the Spirit of Arden Merkin is. They should have won Distillery of the Year at the Oswas. That's all I'm going to leave with. But um, yes, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Happy Christmas. Cheers.